Welcome to Armour Fight Clan. Today I've got a guest with me, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. How you doing? I'm all right. Nice yep, to all you, good. Mate. Thank you for agreeing. Yes, brilliant. Well, of course, the kung fu <laughs> business. That's what it's all about. Thanks for agreeing to come on, mate. I appreciate it. No problem. So, look, most of the times I start in the same place, and I'm going to start in the same place with you. Don't think I haven't noticed the jacket because I have noticed the jacket. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to kind of choose to ignore it just for a minute. I'm going to do my best to ignore the jacket no because worries. that's maybe some point down the line. Let's start a little bit towards the beginning. Based on that jacket and the fact that I met you at the Comic-Con once, which was last year sometime. When was that? October yeah, that or something, was it? wasn't it? July, wasn't it, last year, yeah. July. Uh, Showmasters. Yeah. Showmasters, that's right, yeah. They wasn't very show masters, I don't think, because there was I was there to see Cynthia Rothrock, you see, with my brother. And yes, um, we were looking looking around where to get the signings done after having the photo shoot. And we couldn't find it anywhere. And we asked the show masters. They had show masters written on their T-shirts and everything. And they didn't have a clue. So we came back and went, yeah, these guys weren't very show masters. Uh, well, if, you, if I'd have known, I would have shown you. Uh, well, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, we found it in the end, but we no, no, we st stumbled upon it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I will try that, I'll um, meet you there. Sorry, go sorry, on. go on. Oh, no, I will try again. Scott Atkins. The next the next day, Scott Atkins was there. Oh. Um, wow. But his his queue was massive. Yeah. But never got into it. Okay. Yeah. Well, massive queue, Scott Atkins. Yeah, understandable, I suppose. I think you got mm. booked those things, though, ain't you? Really. Or yeah, can you just the... actually know the signing bit? You can just queue up, I think, but it's the photo shoot you have to book, I think. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. depends on how popular they are. True enough, true enough. Mm. So that's where I met you. I saw you on the stall. Um, you saw you had a few Hong Kong kung fu bits. I did see the jacket there, that's what drew me to you. So oh, right. it's obvious, yeah. yeah, right. So it's obvious. then we had a little chat. I said to you, come on at some point, and you said you would, and now you have. So thanks for doing that. And now I'm yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll start at the beginning and just say you're obviously into the kung fu films. That's obvious, unless I'm yeah. wrong. And if you no, are absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. How did you get into them? What's your first experiences of it? Why do you like Hong Kong films or martial arts films? We're going back. 24 years, I was about 10, 10, 11. Uh, my dad, he back then you get pirate copies so, um, of Shanghai. Oh, yeah. I know nothing about <laughs> it. No, no, nobody knows anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Shang, Shanghai Noon. Um, and I was, I would watch, watch this film and wow, who's this guy? You know. All this action and uh, the fights and what have you. So from right. from then, then we did go legal. Then we went to like Blockbuster when Blockbuster was around, uh, and rented films. And then HMV, uh, they had in our one, in our local one, they had an upstairs and the VHSs. Back when VHS, um, 
we'd have an upstairs bit with my martial arts section and we'd pick out like you know all the older films project a and wheels on meals and what have you and it just spun from there so then find out another person like jet lee uh donnie yen and it just kind of gone on from there then that's what happens right it goes uh once you're into something, you then start to look outside of it. It tends to be Jackie Chan that gets... Yeah, everyone's introduction started. is just Jackie Chan, pretty much, isn't it? I guess. Yeah. Or, uh, depending on how old you are, best Bruce Lee. True. True enough, yeah. True enough. I guess mine was kind of Bruce Lee first. was the first stuff I saw, but it was more... Yeah, we're <laughs> showing the age. <laughs> but it was Bruce Lee, really, uh, that started it, I suppose, as in that was the first of that i saw but i was very very young at that point that was my uncle that had a video with uh Ent the dragon and bruce lee the man the myth on we had like a double oh, yeah. yeah that weren't original either but it had nunchucks <laughs> in it you see so back, back then those nunchucks were cut out but his print yeah exactly the one was most, yeah yeah exactly yeah exactly. they both had nunchucks in but it wasn't until i saw um snake and eagle shadow that made me want to see more want to get involved more you know, those Bruce Lee films are amazing. I knew there was something going on, but I was very, very young then. It was only a little bit later that I went, oh, these films are amazing. I'm going to have to, like you say, widen the net and have a look around. But it definitely started yeah. with, with the Chan first, and it's the same for you. But it's interesting when it started yeah. for you because the difference in age is very noticeable because for you it was Shanghai Noon. Now, by that well, time, yeah, I've been I guess back. that's 2000, something like that. You're right. <laughs> I've been, you know, and I've been watching Chan films for ages. By by then, that was to me. I did like that film, and I do like that film. I do think Shanghai Noon is good. Didn't really like Shanghai Nights as much. That one was a little bit. It was all right, but I like I, Shanghai Noon. I just liked full stop. No, it's very Americanized. Like they, yeah. they didn't let Chucky and Donnie do what they do. So, mm. and yeah. looking at that, I can. For me, it's not difficult to understand because I love Jackie Chan, but thinking of Shanghai Noon being the film that set you off on the path is a little bit strange to me because that's um, less Jackie Chan than the Jackie Chan that I grew up watching, if you know what I mean. I, I guess. I guess. Day and other films there, you see, they, they're the ones that I grew up watching that made me think yeah. the guy was amazing. Whereas in Shanghai Noon, yes, I agree, he's still amazing in that. But it's uh, no I mean, it's older and everything. So yeah, I guess it's because of my dad's my dad's because uh, it was an age appropriate film. Gotcha. I guess so. Once I got the liking to him, I mean, back then it was you know films. Them oh, the, Jackie Chan's films were like rated fifteen and eighteen uh, for no reason. Like there's no blood and guts and everything. It was just that's where it was. Um, no, I agree so, with that. They didn't deserve those ratings at all. They were fun, enjoyable. They had comedy elements. The fighting wasn't brutal or violent, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I guess once I got a liking to him, and then he was like, oh, "Okay, we'll, we'll, sh I'll show you this film and then this film, and then then watched uh, more harder films." But I mean, I was only uh, thirteen, maybe when I saw. Dragons Forever, and I didn't know the whole drug element kind of thing. You were just, oh, I want to see the fights. So, mm. yeah, that was it. Um, to be honest, I, I I can't tell you the age I was when I saw Dragons Forever, but the, the drugs thing didn't mean anything to me, as in no, exactly. I, I did not care about it at all, whereas in The Protector, that was more prevalent at the time. And I saw that way before, so I was younger, I saw that way before Dragons Forever. And in The Protector, the drugs thing to me was obvious. And you know, I was like, yeah, oh, this is a yeah. drugs film with Jackie Chan, which I thought was a little bit weird. But I was old enough to have an understanding that this was an American Jackie Chan film and not a real Jackie Chan film. But well, he um, went back and did it, didn't it, Dragons like... Forever, it's not done the same. Hmm. Yeah, I only just watched that recently, actually. I think it was last year. I only watched Protector. I've never seen Protector before. I always put it off. Interesting um, one. Until uh, until eighty eight films did it, and then thought, oh, pick it up and then watched it. And it was it's not actually a bad film. Uh, I always liked it. I always, I always liked it. it. Yeah. And then watched the right. Hong Kong cut as well, like Jackie's cut of it. Um, 
So there's, there's, is that on that disc? Is it? Yeah, they've got both cuts on there. Mm, okay, well that's that's good then because although I have that version, I haven't got round to watching it. And there's an interesting a... uh, document, not a documentary interview with with uh, is it James Glickenhouse? Is it? I think. Yeah, James uh, Glickenhouse. Yeah. Telling 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 his side of the story of uh, that whole thing that went on. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Well, that's interesting, and I'll definitely have to check that out because that is an interesting film. Danny Aiello, he's brilliant. I always liked him anyway. For me, it was a strange Jackie Chan film because within the first five or ten minutes, he swears, and to me, yeah. that wasn't Jackie Chan, and it really did, especially at the age I was. Now, even now, it don't matter. I like that stuff for a reason, you know, and when I looked at that at the time, I was like, why are they making it? You know, it's like I knew I felt like they were making him swear. I was like, it's just stupid. It don't suit. Well, it was an American one, so you have to swear, like your Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> and your Sylvester Stallone's. You just you have to swear. <laughs> yeah. it's part of the deal. But it didn't look right. It didn't sound right. It didn't look right. No. And yeah, it just weren't weird. But he looked brilliant because he had those skin tight jeans on and that brilliant green bomber jacket. So he looked cool as anything. So he still looked the part. And that, yeah. so you watch both prints, you watch the, because I have seen that cut before on an old VHS that I have. And I think it was the Japanese print where I saw all the extra fighting and they added in the Hong Kong style sound effects. And it was way better. Yeah, I, I didn't watch, because I'd watched the film, I was like, oh, let's skip to, because I think Jackie just did redid the fights. He didn't do like the story element. He would just, let's redo the fights. So just skip forward to the fights. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I can't remember exactly because it was a long time since I've seen that, but there is a couple of different story elements in there as well. Oh, so there yeah. was, some, yeah, there was some normal on the cut. I don't know about that deep that Blu-ray, but on the cut I've seen there was some normal bits as well. It wasn't just just fighting, but yeah. hey, listen, even he knew that it needed something needed doing to it, and that his core audience probably wouldn't be happy with the protector yeah. as yeah. it was. Well, this is this is the fun. This is the fun for me when. You know, getting into the film, getting into Hong Kong films or Asian films, was finding all these different cuts. As you mentioned, like, oh, there's a there's a twenty minutes more on this cut. Oh, I need to find that on VCD <laughs> um, or yeah. importing them or whatever. You know, there was everything was cut out uh, in UK and US releases. You know, all the best bits were always cut out, so it was always something to find. But then you'd find out that Japanese had a different cut of it, or Korea yeah. had a different cut of it. Oh, okay, we're going to have to find all them now. And it's interesting the way you put that point across, because you didn't seem annoyed about that. You actually found that a fun and enjoyable part of discover of watching these films because you're discovering exactly. it's more the fun about of discovering it yeah and then once yeah. once like a8 and eureka got older and then they put all them elements together but back then it was like trying to find going to chinatown and trying to find via vcds <laughs> or vhs's or uh, a few years later that you yeah, would be able to order them from directly from hong kong Right, with the rise of the internet and online shopping. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So it made it a bit easier then. Yeah, so a couple of things you brought up there that I want to touch upon. So one of them was Chinatown and having a look and trying trying to find them on VCD or whatever. And uh, I don't know how often you go to Chinatown or when you last went, but there ain't nothing there now. Well, I'm, I'm not from London. I'm from Leeds. Okay. Um, and our Chinatown shut. Years and years ago, I'm talking probably. Oh, they used to have a, a Chinatown in Leeds. You had your own. Yeah, they did. They had the way, it was kind of like a just a building with lots of Chinese shops. Okay. <laughs> and that was Chinatown. Yeah. yeah, but it was it was always you know interesting going in there. Yeah. Of course, yeah. But I've and been a few times you... to, the, to London, the London one, London yeah. Chinatown. Yeah. And did you? And even Manchester. You... Manchester, there was one. There's one there. Was, I don't know if it's still there, but you're right. There was one in no, Manchester. Not sure well. still there, yeah. So you managed to pick up some films from the Leeds version of Chinatown, did you? From from memory, uh, I think the Master, um, Jet, uh, Jet Li, the Master, and Hong Sayu, I think. Okay, so yeah, two Jet Li films, yeah. Yeah, they weren't very much. Maybe maybe Drunken Master too. 
Maybe. Yeah. Well, the yeah, no, that, yeah, well, that was on VCD, yeah. Uncut, uncut version, I think it was. But my dad also used to get, uh, my dad, he had a friend who was originally from Hong Kong. Um, so every now and again, he would go to China and then come back with VCDs and DVDs. And we'd, we'd get them off of him. Your dad that or was, your dad's friend? Sorry, yeah, but my, my, my dad's friend would bring them back from Hong Kong and then my dad would get them off him. Okay. Was he bringing them back for your dad or for you or for both? For both. All right. Well, then, then I'm not finished chatting about that that part of your um, upbringing because it seems to me that your dad is an integral part. You mentioned him straight away and said it was him and Shanghai Noon. Yeah. But 100%. he actually... He's into these films as well, is he? He's not as big as I went. He still likes them, and he always introduced me to newer, like uh, when on back came. Right. Uh, oh, here's Tony Jar. Look at Tony Jar. He's and then watch Tony Jar. So he would introduce me, but then I took it further and then started watching other films and trying to find out. You know, as I got older. Yeah. Um, as I got into adulthood, I'd look into other films then, and yeah, he, he's yeah, he's not as big as into it as me. Still enjoys it. A good influence, though. You see, this is the thing. So your dad brought you up on good stuff. It, well, I've chatted to about to a few people about this, and the people that I know that are into this stuff, you know, they've come out good. They, they're decent people and whatnot. And so this stuff. I'd like to think I am. Yeah. Is, yeah. Right. <laughs> But it ain't yeah. horrible stuff to watch, as in it does, to me, it set me on a good path. You know, the morals and the ethics and the standards. Yeah, of course, I got a lot of that from my mum and dad. You know, and I did. You know, I, I yeah. was lucky. You know, I was in a household that did bring me up with those good things. But to me, those those kung fu films, even though they are, they have the fighting element, they are sort of cloaked in this morals, ethics, high standards, you know, wanting to succeed, oh, yeah. do well, overcome discipline, evil, well, discipline, yeah, martial arts, discipline, e exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I think that stuff's brilliant to watch, and it's a great I went, thing. Uh, to do I went on to doing martial arts myself after that. You know, I want to, I want to go do what they do. I mean, I haven't done it in a long time, but I used to do well, local karate. Everyone goes to karate, or then Wing Chun. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So you ain't done it for a while, but that's that also led you on to martial arts, which is not a bad thing. Again, you know, to start learning, it gives you lots of things, martial arts, doesn't it? It helps you to turn up on time and, like I say, discipline, respect your training partners and others around you. It, it, it gives you so much. And that came from, it, it might have happened anyway, but for you, it came from watching the movies. It's exactly the same reason it came for me. So, yeah, they, I think with, 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 with young kids young boys they always especially boys yeah they always like regardless of martial arts i think they would find regardless of films that would find martial arts anywhere even if it was just for a little bit yeah like lots of people find way. boxing don't they so yeah yeah it does seem that way mm. now before i forget because i will forget you also said there eureka 88 films getting hold of things and bringing it all together and Although I agree and I know what you're saying, often with those releases, more you know, more often than I should, than it should happen, is I put them on, and I have to say, sometimes I'm pretty disappointed in those. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there's seems to always be something for me to complain about, you know? So Snake and Eagle Shadow, uh, as a, as just one example off the top of my head, is one where you said before you're looking around, you're looking for different versions, different cuts of the film. And we had what we had. We had the English dub we had. We had it with the soundtrack that we had on it. And then they bring it out. And I want the pure version. So I want the original language. Uh, I want the soundtrack that was supposed to originally be on there. But I, I yeah. also want my version. And they kind of got it right because they gave me the English dub. They didn't redub it. They gave me the original or as they term it now the classic english dub and i was over the moon i pressed play and i went i don't really want to watch this in cantonese i've seen it in cantonese i, I love it in cantonese but i grew up watching the english dub 
So please yeah. don't redubbed it. And they didn't. It was the original dub. And I went, brilliant. Thanks. But the soundtrack still had the, the Hong Kong soundtrack on it. And I went, no, I don't want the Hong Kong soundtrack on the English dub. I want, you want what you grew up. Yeah, but yeah. it's not. And so that was a complaint. And then I've watched it, you know, in my head, I went, so I can't really watch this as in I'm not going to enjoy it as I want to, unless I just watched the Cantonese print, which I will enjoy, no problem. The English one, it was a little bit, again, throwaway for me because it didn't work for me because it had the wrong soundtrack. So, you know, if he if he steps on the feet, you know, where Sam, Sam Seed, he puts the feet out for him and he steps on the feet, I expect at that first foot to have the music that I expect and it doesn't. It has a different uh, soundtrack. When it opens on the red screen, ba ba bum, ba bum. Yeah. I expect dum 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 dum, and I don't. I, I you know, okay, on the Cantonese, I I want that, but on the English print, I want the music I want. Now I'm sure there's reasons for it. I don't know if there is or isn't reasons for it. I don't know if they could have given me that, but to me, it still went. I still went. I still don't have this film as I want it, unless I go back to my old VHS, which is four by three pan and scan, and not so good quality. I still yeah. don't have this ultimate so-called version which is how they're sold to you this is the ultimate you know they're now known as boutique blu-rays and then you get to the fight with the snake and the cat and it's cut and now yeah i've seen that yeah, yeah, got put, yeah right so i've had to put up with censored these hong kong films these chinese films being censored for years and i'm still getting it i and wonder thinking, i wonder why i got then i wonder if that the reason why it, it was given a downgrade in in certificate because on Hong Kong Legends it was an 18 and then a or Eureka or AA it was 15. Right, because okay. they took the cat and the snake out, possibly. Probably. And don't get me wrong, but, I love animals. I never really yeah. in principle I enjoyed that scene for what it was trying to you know convey to me. But you know, I never enjoyed watching the cat spinning up and down because uh, you know I just didn't I didn't enjoy that. However, I have got a fast forward button and I can choose to fast forward it because I've seen that scene many, many times because I've watched that film, you know, countless times. So I yeah. can choose to fast forward it. And to me, they've not given me the, the complete version. So I don't know who these films. I don't always feel like they're for me. Right. I don't know whether they're trying to open a new door for a new market. Now, I know they're for me because I'm the one buying them. Now, I'm not saying they don't create new fans by bringing these films out. Of course, I want new generations to watch these films. I want them to. However, what percentage of people buying these films are people like me and what percentage are new fans, if you like? Because sometimes I look at it and go, you guys ain't seeing the true version. And they might go, yeah. yes, they are. It's in widescreen and, and stuff. But yeah. I always feel the same missing. Not always. I guess that's I guess yeah. that's where the that the, the, the fun is for them, then they can go and hunt them them versions of it down. You know what? You know, Good point. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe you're right. If they're into it enough, yeah. then yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe as well, you're playing for the music and stuff, there could be a copyright issue. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. 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 It's like but... um what film what film got it got a U it got a US release. But not a UK release. It was recently on Blu-ray because um, again, the UK censorship won't, won't allow it in the UK. It was a martial arts film. Okay, you well, know, Jack yeah. I can't remember what it was called now. Okay, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. There could always be explanations and reasons, and I'm happy to, to hear them and, and understand what the issues are. I'm not the one remastering these films, bringing them out, releasing them, um, having these problems, hitting these barriers and then deciding whether to do it. Or not. I'm not in that boat, but I am the end consumer. Yeah. And to me, whether they can help it or not, if they can't help it, then I understand if they can help it, then they're just, in my opinion, I haven't spoken to all of the right people or they have spoken to people that want it like this and go, well, we can't do it. So I still want that because I've still got a nice, clean Blu-ray of the Hong Kong Cantonese cut, which, you know, I do want. But truly, I want that English dub in widescreen, in Blu-ray quality yeah. with the soundtrack that I want. And it ain't there. So, you know. yeah. Well, this is, this is why I don't get rid of my um, my DVDs. I've still got my, my Hong Kong Legends DVDs. Just in case. What did, 
what was you doing at the time with the Hong Kong legends and stuff like that? Was you picking them up from places like HMV, just shopping in? Yeah, HMV and uh, and you'd rent certain ones from Blockbuster, uh, Virgin Megastars when that was around. Uh, uh, yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Virgin. Yeah, but I like the Hong Kong Legends one because I like the Bear Logan commentaries. Oh, oh, they they, um, they always give me more information, more information, and yeah, just endless amounts of information. Completely different level of information with the Bay Logan stuff. They are, I mean, I've not seen them surpassed or matched at all. Yeah, the guys. No, amazing. exactly, hundred percent. Yeah, I think the most. Not knocking any of the commentaries now, but it's more like a chat like me and you are having. Yeah, well, brilliant then. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, listen, I agree. It's not chatting over film. Yeah, I don't. I don't dislike those commentaries. I still enjoy them, um, but they don't have the same information like you say it's just the guys having a laugh and and that's all yeah, right. it's yeah. nothing I mean, it, but... they did they did mention in one of them that you know they're, they're not like trying to copy their logan in that aspect they okay. bring their own, own sp- they they said it in in one of the audio commentaries that they're not trying to be their logan or, or copy that you know any anywhere because mm. he's his own yeah. he's his own element so. yeah man, which i understand the... No, he's doing his own. Uh, he does his own little commentaries on his website, actually. So uh, I, I, I did see that actually. Yeah, that he's he, he did one for Snake and Eagle Shadow as well. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, that one I'll definitely be interested in in uh, in watching for sure, or listening to for sure. Yeah, well, that's one of my top films. Yeah, so very interesting the difference in where we start, you know, Snake and Eagle Shadow and Shanghai Noon. And I'm so glad that those later Jackie Chan films still had that ingredient of him enough that you could feel that there was, when you watched it, you knew there was something special. Because as much as I look at films like that, I did really like that film, by the way. But as much as I watch films like that and go, oh, a lot has changed and a lot has been lost between here and there. It's because I've had all that, background before it um but there's it's still better than anything else that's out there you know it's still better than all the other hollywood action films and whatever it still has enough you see because it had enough yeah. for you to notice it and go i'm watching something different here yeah it did um i mean when you get into his later later films so like i i like you noticing with shanghai noon i then noticed with uh the spy next door oh and that was yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah. I actually didn't I, well, well, that, that would have introduced yeah. other kids to jackie then but then that wouldn't have been for me so. yeah you are right i did watch that with uh, a youngster and he loved it and i actually didn't hate that one i thought it was okay because i thought it was an okay film even if it didn't have Jackie Chan in it. No, it didn't use Jackie Chan like I would want him to be used. But I'm also very understanding and accepting of, I can't expect the mid-20-year-old Jackie Chan to be the same as a 50-, 60-year-old Jackie Chan. You know, what, what, no, what, yeah. what do I want? The, the guy he's was still... still... He's, still do, he's still doing good, though, I mean, for his age as well. He's still doing good. Right? And then if you I don't look see, at man, like I don't see many 68-year-old jumping around and falling down from buildings and stuff. So. Right, exactly. And even when he was in his 40s, some of the films he was doing were still really, really, really good. So he really did, you know, extend that period of doing these action films for a, you know, a long that, period of time, way longer than many that others. That for me was his peak, his peak like 40, because he'd started Drunken Master 2. Like, that was it. That was, that was him at his top level then. That was kind of... They say, yeah, he was in his 40s then, but, yeah, that was the last top-level one, I think. Yeah. I'd have to look at the filmography and go, well, what came after it? Am I wrong? But I kind of remember well, him saying. It was all the 90s films then, so you had Mr. Nice Guy and From in the Bronx. And... Yeah, Who Am I and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which was yeah. still good. I, I really liked I agree. From Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I, Mr. I like Mr. Nice Guy is very, very cheesy, but. Yeah, Rumble I still enjoyed too. it. Yeah, yeah, I, I still enjoyed that. Um, I mean, there are some around just around that era that I did. You know, they were a bit. I mean, like Tuxedo, 
that was a bad one, I think. I'd never liked the medallion or tuxedo. They were two that I went, oh, you know, what's happened here? Yeah. You know, there's... there's it was, it was money. I guess it's money. Money talks. I guess so. But, you know, like Rush Hour, they were still good. Even Rush Hour 3, all of all three of them I still liked, I still enjoyed. Because to me, they're good films anyway. So Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like... I, didn't, I can't... I don't... Rush Hour 3, for me, even watching those cinemas, I went to the cinemas to see that, and that was like, oh, no, this is... Too far. <laughs> right. The jokes were just right. easy with minus throwaway jokes. The fight one not yeah. great. It was just, no, that's, everyone's wanting Rush Hour 4, I think, now just leave it. Yeah, yeah, possibly, yeah. <laughs> well, we're <laughs> always happy to have more Chan, of course, but, but it's understandable, yeah, yeah. as I say. It's understandable that the, the quality is going to go down. He's not making Hong Kong films. Hong Kong films um, that are still being made in Hong Kong aren't what they were then any, anyway. Whether they're Jackie Chan or not, you know. So I think um I think well, there's not that danger element anymore, it's more safety oriented, but there's still like I think Hong Kong films still give Hollywood films a room for their money. Because a lot oh, of it is still yeah. physical effects, a lot of it's still physically done, like not on drop from a blue screen, you know, drop on a wire from a blue screen. They're actually doing it and getting run over by a car or jumping onto a car or whatever it be. Whereas you're watching yeah. Fast and Furious, and that's all digital effects. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that part of the thing that uh, attracted you to these films? The the sort of more real life stuff going on, like you because earlier the on you mentioned where you, where you go, oh, that must have hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you watch films now, I mean, the, as as entertaining as they are, like without without I without Hong Kong films, they would be the films wouldn't be how they are now in Hollywood, in my opinion, like the fights and whatever, it would not be the same. Whereas, you know, you watch them and you don't feel that oomph. You don't feel that, oh, that must have hurt. No, because you know it probably didn't. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like watching and wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? That's a, quite a good analogy, that, yeah. It, it can be a little yeah. bit like that, although those wrestlers are you know, well athletic and still, still oh yeah, I'm not, not, not knocking them, but you know, I, all, my see, I was Hong Kong films. And my brother was all about wrestling and was like, "Oh, you know, this is fake." <laughs> like, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not fake. It's not. Well, yeah, I'm sure he could have said to you, "Yeah, but yours are just films. They're fake as well." But you <laughs> would have been able to draw aspects out and gone, "Yeah, but look at this." You know, he really yeah. did. I don't know fall on the floor like you say drop on the car or, or whatever it is yeah but, but then again in wrestling yeah. people people got hurt and died as well so. it's, yeah yeah tragically That's just, you're right yeah. i think it's just boys being boys and like mine's better than yours yeah <laughs> yeah i think yours was better than his i have to say in, in this instance yeah. yeah 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 there's no doubt about it so do you have a favorite jackie chan film uh i it's very um it's not one of the norms it's it's gorgeous well now you see now that's good that you bring up that film because it's a film that doesn't get brought up uh very often and i have a very strong affinity with that film simply because i have only been to hong kong once and when i went to hong kong that was shown at the cinema so i saw oh. that at the cinema in hong kong and uh, that isn't the reason I love that film, but it does make me love that film even more you know, because I have such a, a a profound experience with watching it. I love the film yeah. as well. Yeah. but It's yeah. not one of its greatest. Yeah, yeah, it's not like it. a massive action pieces, but it's just something about it that just... And then, because I watched the DVD, so it was cut like 30 minutes, we're already gone. Um, so I right. that. Okay. Um, and the dub, and then I found years ago was the Hong Kong version. So I watched that, and then again, eighty eight films have now released that one as well. Yeah, so I've, I've grabbed it. I, I even because I even emailed eighty eight films because they said oh, I was coming out in December. So I emailed them saying, "What's happened with Gorgeous? Why is it not coming? Hope it's not cancelled." <laughs> and then finally, it got released. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it was just nothing about it. I don't know. It was I liked Brad Allen and um, and the music songs. Sweet, uh, sweet I know, I know. Music, everything, everything about it. Um, 
But the, yeah. like you with Snake in an Eagle Shadow, for me, I watched the dub version, and there's something about the the Jackie's voice, not Jackie himself, but the dub. Um, it was just something about the voice that made me drawn to it all the time. See? And then the the AA film are brought out, and it's not the same dub. It's it's not the same voice actors or anything. You see what I'm saying? Right. So you have yeah. the same same feeling with that. You're right. Yeah, exactly. It's kind exactly. Of, yeah, and you but got I have, excited. I have to you watch. Um, them, you know, I have to watch them in Cantonese. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're watching Cantonese, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the only reason you get the the full full two hour one. <laughs> Mate, that soundtrack. Yeah. Brilliant. Even the little bits are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the dolphin jumping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant soundtrack. Yeah, I bought that sound. I mean, luckily I was able to get it. As in, you know, sometimes you want these soundtracks, you can't get them. But yeah, that soundtrack I got, and I love that music as well. See, so it yeah. done the same thing for a quite a long period of time. It would have been to do with everything, you know, my age and the experience and where I watched it and how much I loved the bloke at that. You know, that film for me as well is as. I'll do the classic, you know, it's got a special place in my heart, gorgeous. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There is something about that film that's, I agree. Uh, whatever you feel, I'm pretty sure we feel the same with that film. I've I got think connection. anything with like Ken Law, Ken Law with it as well. So, yeah. 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 That's why I like, I really, I really like Thunderbolt as well. Thunderbolt doesn't get as recognition as it, you, as it, as it, yeah, as well, a lot of people I mean, give it. Thunderbolt, I like. Well. I mean, I like because know, I like I like the sound I like the soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. The soundtrack is amazing. His Jackie's song that he sang in that that was just amazing. Well, see now the problem here is is that I don't really know it. Now I've seen the film. Yeah, I'm not going to sing it I, to you though. Please, why not? <laughs> why, why not? Then it's. You know, can you maybe you can just do a bit of the tune? No, I don't know. I'll let you find that on your own. <laughs> oh wow. yeah thanks well the truth yeah. is it does need a rewatch but there's a reason i don't like thunderbolt and it's the whole thing of him being injured and getting doubled in it loads um yeah and then there's always tight cam tight camera angles and what have you um i mean they did well to to do it i don't know i just like it i just it's just one of those obscure jackie Chan films yeah that... but it's it's one that I, i'm happy to revisit it but it, all of these films need Rewatching when you change and you get older and you mature, you watch things with different eyes. Yes, and when, yeah, yeah. And when I watched that film, to me, he could do no wrong. You know, the guy's at his peak. It's the next Jackie Chan, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And I'm, I, I can't tell you the story of the film. I know it's the race driving one. I can't yeah. really remember the film, but the bits that my brain remembers are the negatives. The fact that I was watching it, going, "Well, it's not him." You know, I grew up with with it all being him, and to me, this film weren't in. And even when I found out why, I still went, well, it don't matter then. That, that just confirms that I, I was right, that it isn't him, and it makes it not good. It's hard for me to watch when it's not him, you know? It was, it was a difficult to watch, that one. When you say it's not him, like, a lot of things want him when it turned out that... I know. Um, yeah, uh, now especially, because... With big screens and high definition and everything like that. Uh, what was I watching? I was watching um, Dragons Forever, and he does this mm -hmm. kick behind his tubes or something, and you can just tell it is not Jackie. Like you can blame see it's not Jackie, but when you yeah. watch it on VHS, you yeah. just didn't know. Like you couldn't right. tell. Yeah, and and I think a lot of the time, oh, I can only tell you from my point of view. You know, back then, I think I always knew about that kick. But oh, all right, you know what you're on about, yeah, 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 yeah. But I yeah. ignored it, I just went, you no, know, no. so I would never bring it up. So I'd be watching it with friends because a lot of this was about sharing what I loved. So if friends came round, family members come round, I'd always be putting on Jackie Chan films and trying to convince them, look at this, you know, you're watching whatever it is, a Terminator, look at what I'm watching, and yeah. I'd always put stuff on, and I'd know inside i was having to keep a straight face on things like that kick because i would be saying that he's brilliant he does everything himself this that, and the other he's a real life superhero but i'd know that kick and this is without internet this is without high definition i still knew because i could see it and uh, i would just 
I would just not say anything. I would just yeah. say not say anything. And I, most other people wouldn't care, wouldn't notice. And they would go, oh, he's brilliant. And it might even say brilliant kick. And I'd have to keep biting my tongue. And go, I'm, not <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying it because I can't disparage the Chan. I can't do it. So yeah. even now, you I, think I, up, like, oh, I have no. no. I have no doubt he'd be able to do that kick, but I think it was something to do with the speed of the kick that it was that it was a problem. The the thing with those films, because that that isn't obviously just a Jackie Chan film, you know, it's got Sam Hung Yun Bio in it as well. Yeah, it was a the, one, uh, films, the, the Three Dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's the strife of perfection, mm. and if that kick, I mean, to me, I'd say just take the kick out and do something easier or whatever but for me he probably either weren't there that day or he tried to do that kick a couple of times and he was not that happy with it and someone else went well i'll have a go i, I mean i believe that's yun Biu doing that kick i don't know for sure but he looks like him yeah um, i'll have to look back i think it was either yun Biu or one of the men yeah yeah I, i'm not 100 percent sure but you know i haven't looked it up because i told you i've ignored it yeah <laughs> i don't yeah, want to know right that, yeah, but, but yeah I mean that, that, that was another thing like chucking down all these all these vhs's and, and different cuts of films for me i love little tidbits like that i love little throwaway knowledge stuff yeah i absolutely oh, yeah, so love. I. I love, you know, in hong kong films oh did you know this it's like uh lord of the rings oh uh vigo mortison broke his his toe <laughs> Nobody else cares, but I care. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? <Yeah. laughs> All right. Well, I didn't know. Now I know. I guess I can choose to care or not. I don't know yeah. if I do. I mean, he broke his toe. When he kicked, he kicked, uh, he kicked, um, he kicked a helmet and he screams out and he's in the film, but the scream is because he's, he broke his toe when he kicked the helmet. You see, now that is interesting because it's a, now we know that the scream is real, the pain. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what exactly. I mean is like most most people wouldn't really wouldn't be bothered, like but I like that kind of knowledge, like knowing that like oh Jackie didn't do that kick, but I you know the reason why. Yeah, I, I want to know it, but I put it in a little box and go, yeah, but it don't matter. Oh, yeah, forget it, about it, yeah. it really, yeah. <laughs> because that's that's you know, I don't wanna I don't I won't let it shatter the illusion, do you know what I mean? Uh, well, that's and um, that's another reason why I liked uh, them. I think I like because I love read. I've got Screen Power magazines, um, you know, Jackie Chan Screen Power magazines when they did that uh, Kung Fu magazine um, books on that Bear Logan had written, and all these little tidbits, all these little things that not just necessarily the kick, but um, why so and so actor did this, and why so and so actress did this, or why what involved this stunt. I, I just love little knowledge of knowledgeable little bits like that. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, it's definitely interesting for sure. Mm. Uh, amazing stuff to to find out because it gives you a true insight into what what was going on at the time. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. That's why I, it it kind of bugs me that when when you watch Jackie Chan um, interviews, his answers are always the same. The never, the never new answers, the never new insights. But I was right. watching um, some bizarre, like Hong Kong or Japanese, like interview with him, and when he was speaking in his own language, um, and he was giving out more information. It's probably because his English is very limited to what he can say, to what he says in 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 Chinese. Yeah, well, that makes sense. He might not be able to express it, or it'll come across the wrong way, or or something yeah. like that. So we see it as he's keeping secrets, but well, maybe he is, but there will be some element of the language barrier. I but guess, I do yeah. think it's from, uh, some of them he doesn't remember anyway after his knock on the head. So. Th that would be understandable, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the knock on the head you're talking about is the armor of God knock on the head. Yeah. Well, that one, that, but I'm sure he's sustained more knocks on the head than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one one of many knocks on the head, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was the pivotal knock on the head. Yeah, good one. Good way of putting it. And considering someone who smashed his body up and whatnot, he's doing all right, isn't he, really? Absolutely, yeah. Still doing brilliant stuff. So, looking at the time, I'm going to leave that there on purpose because as long as you don't mind, I'd like to have you back on to discuss the jacket. Yep. If that's all right. 
Yeah, I think yeah, that would be really. better because we've we've chatted about why you like this stuff and and whatever. And I'm really glad that's see, it's really interesting talking to different people. Not many people would mention Gorgeous, and um, yeah, I have a strange connection to that film as well. So that was a good one. Oh yeah, thank you for inviting me because I do I do enjoy. There's not many people around me around in my circle that I can speak to about this sort of thing. Um, oh, whenever cool. I go yeah. to whenever I go to Birmingham, um, I have a friend Phil. I think you know. Have you you've, you've heard his name before? Phil Gillen Gillen. Um, I, oh. I meet up with him. And we we discuss stuff yeah. with him. Yeah, he came yeah. to he came to the trip as well. Yeah. Far East film fans, bloke. East, East yeah, uh, Eastern here, Eastern here. It's no, oh, well, we ain't done a very good job there, but <laughs> <laughs> edit this bit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, because he's still in it, you know, so it's good. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then you can have a good chat with him about it. Well, that was the good. Well, thing, yeah, right? whenever I go from the Birmingham, I always, I always, I always meet up with him and uh, and we chat and stuff because he did a lot. He did a few of the commentaries for eighty eight films. As well, so his knowledge is quite, you know, he's quite knowledgeable on what what stuff, what films and what have you. Yeah, yeah. well, the, the, for me, the knowledge is a personal thing. Sometimes people go, oh, I don't know that much, and this, that, and the other. It's like, well, you don't need to know stuff. You just need to like the stuff, enjoy the stuff. It's what you get out of it. It's a personal thing. Who cares yeah, yeah. who knows this much and that much, and oh, he knows more than this person, that person. A lot of people worry about stuff like that. It's like. You love the stuff. You love the yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't worry about that. Is it's just the conversation. Like to some people, the extent of conversation in terms of Jackie Chan is like, oh yeah, I love the rush hours. Right, cool. I know, but I want to talk more about stuff. So. Yeah, but no, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. No worries. Look, we'll leave it there. Thanks for coming on yeah. and having a chat. I'm definitely going to chat to you again because we both know that there was another reason. Why? I yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got loads of reasons, but there's, you know, to me, there's a major topic that. And then we'll covered. probably miss that topic, and then have to do another one. <laughs> yeah, probably. And and yeah. and just you know, I'm more than carry happy on, to on. do that because yeah, because yeah. I love the chat. So yeah. So part two, for coming Jet, on. Jet, part two, Jet Lee, Donnie Yen. Yeah, we can chat Jet Lee and uh, and Donnie Yen for sure because I watch all that stuff as well. I end up chatting yeah. about Chan. And I love I love Jackie Chan. There's no doubt about it. I don't want to not talk about Jackie Chan, but I'm happy to talk about other stuff and all for sure. Yeah. Well, it's just it's the natural start point, isn't it? It was just the, that's the start point. Where we end is where we end. <laughs> Real and natural. That's what we're all about. That's it. Yeah. How Thanks, I like Steven, it. For coming on. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Well, I'll, obviously, I'll see you next time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank nice you. Nice one. Right. See you, see you later. later. Thank you. Thank you very much.